On this week's CMA Live All Access, we've got brand new announcements from Sound Digital, Diamond Audio, MECP, and Five Access Innovations. This is CMA Live All Access, brought to you by SiriusXM and sponsored by Five Access Innovations. And it starts now. Paying attention to social media or had the chance to attend the Dallas K-Fest, then three letters absolutely have been standing out, and that is GAN. What is GAN? What is it all about? What does it stand for? What does it mean? It's coming to you from the team at Sound Digital, the engineers of amplifiers coming out of Brazil that managed to pack so much power into small footprint, but GAN is a technology that is really taking over, and according to Jacob Brown, the next big thing. So Jacob. Let's lay it down. What is GAN? Yeah, Ben, when we say it's taking over, this isn't a a new technology. This is something that's been relatively established in several different aspects of the electronics industry. But for our world, you don't see it in car, you see it in high-end home. So the cool thing about a a GAN technology is is we've essentially reimagined how Class D works, eliminating the MOSFETs and adding in a GAN transistor. The cool thing about this transistor is it is considerably smaller than than a traditional MOSFET. It's got way better internal resistance, way more current flow than than a traditional MOSFET. And it controls the switching of the amplifier much better. And that's really why it thrives in, uh, in an amplifier application. Wow, Jacob, you said some key words there that are sure to resonate, especially with high-end audio enthusiasts. So GAN technology is is prevalent and exists in high-end home audio. So the question is, how have you incorporated it? What does it do to actually affect the sonic performance and output of these amplifiers? And have Sound Digital still found a way to incorporate this new technology while maintaining what they're known for, which is that small form factor footprint? Yeah, so I, I'm kind of going to address some of those concerns, maybe out of order of which the way you asked them, because, yeah, absolutely. You know, Sound Digital is known for extremely small footprint amplifiers and massive power in those extremely small amplifiers. So, of course, we're going to take that idea and we're going to run with it. So so when we incorporate the GAN technology into the amplifiers themselves, it, it allows us to bring massive power into a small footprint amplifier and not have to worry about some of the thermal concerns and and heat transfer and all the other stuff. But it really does it in a way that perfectly fits what Sound Digital is known for. So now we're just adding another asterisk to the Sound Digital name. Small, powerful, and let's call it SQ. So when you had asked how it affects the, the quality of the amplifier or what it does for us in the listening environment, GAN technology gives us the ability to essentially eliminate distortion and skyrocket signal to noise ratio. So in the SQ world, these are two of the things that we really concern ourselves with that aren't maybe necessarily a focus in class D. So now that we have class D amplifiers that have minimal, if not minimal to no total harmonic distortion, and uh, a signal to noise ratio that absolutely dwarfs many of what we consider high-end A, B, S, Q amplifiers, it, it gives the listener that, that feel of this is truly S, Q. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of other factors that go into that when we look at other devices in the amplifier, the signal chain, things like that. But really, if what we're looking at is a spec sheet, you know, this amplifier would go up against many other amplifiers in two to three times, if not more, the price range. So it's it's really amazing to be able to bring an SQ amplifier to market from the Sound Digital name, but also do it in a way that's only that big. And when I say it's only this big, you know, in relation to my hand, not, you know, camera tricks, it, it is incredibly small for what it is. And this amplifier is our new five channel. So this is the 1500.5 that is 125 by four at four ohm and a thousand watt by one at two ohm, all built into the same chassis. So it's something that we felt the car audio world needed, the SQ world, you know, loves small single amp solutions. 
And we felt that this was going to be the best way to really introduce GAN to the masses, unlike when we did it before with our Uber limited production, extremely high end amplifier. So this amplifier really is designed for, I don't want to say the average consumer, but maybe the consumer that's looking for a little bit more than a traditional five channel as far as sound signature and sound quality and, and noise goes, but doesn't necessarily want to go out and spend three, four, five thousand dollars for a uh, a high end AB amp. That looks like a really clean piece of equipment right there. Let's let's get the the nitty gritty here, uh, Jacob. So, what exactly is the amplifier offering from Sound Digital in the GAN lineup? And uh, maybe you can share with us a couple of the quick features uh, that are on the chassis. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that, that we really love about this amplifier is, and, and especially due to the GAN technology, is we've got a Class D amp with an extremely high frequency range. I believe, you know, the five channel, if I remember correctly, plays up to something like 67 kilohertz. So to have a Class D amplifier that doesn't have some of the limitations of a traditional Class D is really cool. That's going to put it on par with some of the other AB high-end amplifiers that we all know and love. Um, the other things that we try to do with this amp, other than just give you a great sound signature, is versatility. So high and low level inputs via the RCA connectors, uh, absolutely phenomenal control capabilities with, as far as what the built-in crossovers will do. Um, input selector channels, which is something that Sound Digital hasn't really done before. So now you can feed you know, two RCA inputs into the amplifier and feed all outputs without utilizing Y adapters or anything along those lines. So we really tried to make it a little more installer friendly than possibly some of the other offerings because we know what, what the goal of this amplifier is. And that is a, a, a one amp solution, which is going to allow you, the installers, the retailers, and even the consumers to get way more bang for the buck with their installation uh, budget. You know, I mean, when you're minimizing other equipment needed to make it work, other wiring, everything along those lines, this amplifier is really going to be a great option in that that five channel market. So whether you're running two way active front and a sub three way quasi active uh, front and a sub front and rear and a sub, you know, we've really got the ability to do a lot of installations with just this single chassis. Uh, the other cool thing too is this isn't going to be a one hit wonder. So we are also working on a eight channel in this same lineup, in this exact same footprint. The cool thing that I really like about the eight channel is again, that mindset of versatility. Not only is it an eight channel, it's a seven channel. Not only is it a seven channel, it's a staggered six channel. Not only is it a staggered six, it's also a big four channel. So that amp, uh, if we get what we really want when it comes out, is going to be about 165 by eight at four ohm, and it is going to be bridgeable. So now we're also looking at a 500 watt by four, four ohm rating. So the cool thing there is, you know, if we're looking at a staggered six channel, it gives me the ability to have tons and tons of dynamic headroom with 165 by four at four ohm and 500 by two at four ohm. If you want something a little more, maybe small cabin environment with a front sub that can handle about 500 watts of power, now you've got essentially 165 by six plus 500 by one. So, you know, in a Porsche where you've got a front mounted sub and a three way active in the doors, you've got far more ability to kind of utilize again, one amplifier, extremely high SQ uh, mindset with this amp, but small footprint, efficient, class D, all the fun things that we love about Sound Digital. The new GAN series amplifiers from Sound Digital, Jacob, um, some really cool features. Uh, let the dealers know out there as far as availability, timelines, and what they should do to contact if they want to become the next Sound Digital dealer. So the cool thing about these amplifiers is, is Sound Digital really decided to do something special with it. And basically what that is, is the GAN line is going to be available from exclusive retailers. So we really are putting a, a, a phenomenal product in the hands of uh, the phenomenal network of retailers that we can assemble for it. Uh, the five channel will be available here shortly. So probably within the next month or two, uh, we will see those rolling out in applications in the real world. And the eight channel is already pretty much ready to rock. So we're going to see that come fourth quarter of this year. So everything in the GAN lineup will be available before the end of the year. Uh, if you're interested in finding out where you can get it, just go ahead and visit our website, sounddigitalusa.com. 
utilizing the dealer locator and look for the specific GAN icon that we will be implementing on that site to find out who the closest and local GAN retailer is going to be. Hi, Jody from Five Access here. Just want to bring everybody up to speed with what we do and how we do it. We're a display company. We do a lot of custom graphics. Obviously, we do custom audio boards. We do RGB lighting. We do graphical work up top. We also do all the different custom amp mounts. So for all your store needs, we do front counters, we do home audio sections, we do lighting, everything that you're looking for, give us a call. Again, it's 5Axis, 414-326-7162. So it looks like the team at Diamond Audio, who has been really successful putting out product for the Harley Davidson market, has once again expanded their catalog for they've just come up with a brand new kit for older model Harleys and in the form of a lid kit. We've got Brian Piper here to tell us all about it. Now, Brian, what exactly is the new product? So our new product is a Diamond Audio lid kit for the 1998 to 2013 Harley Davidson uh, saddlebags. This is designed to be a cut-in kit. It comes with all the parts you need, comes with the template, comes with wiring. All of our kits are sold with speaker options. So you can't just buy the kit itself. You buy our kits with one of our different, four different series of speakers available in seven different types. Oh, we already know, Brian, that Diamond offers several different types of speaker series within Harley-Davidson. So why don't you break out for us the exact options that dealers have when ordering this new lid kit? Sure, Ben. So what we have is we have our very popular HXM F-series speakers, which are available in a 4-ohm or 2-ohm option. The great thing with these is they are a, a very wide band speaker that has LEDs built into them. So if you want the fancy lights and all of that, you can use those as well. Then we have our MP series, which are our most popular series of speakers for motorcycles. These are the mid-range with the compression horn built into them. These are also available in a two ohm and four ohm option. Then you get into our coax sub or our MS69 series. These are the the two and four ohm option of a waterproof six by nine with an extended bottom end response. So you get a lot of mid bass out of them. And then our top end Neo series six by nines are also available as a package with these lid kits. So lots of options for dealers to choose from different levels of performance, some with light, some without. What in your opinion, uh, Brian, makes the diamond audio design for the lid kits stand out from a couple of the other designs that are available in the market right now? So the big thing with ours, when we looked at how to put this lid kit together and looking at some of the other options available out there, we wanted something that was going to have a durable assembly method. So we wanted something that when you put it together, it wasn't going to fall apart, riding down the road, shaking and vibrating, screws weren't going to fall out, things like that. So one of the big things we did is in the grill, when you go to assemble it, the grill has thermally mounted nut rivets. And when you put that together with the lid base, then you put a machine screw through. And typically we tell people to use a little blue Loctite on that machine fastener and you thread these in. And now you have a very stable mounting system that is not likely to come apart when you're writing. All right. So for the record, this is a kit. So I imagine there's a lot of different components that are included in the kit. Why don't you break out for us, Brian, exactly what we get in the box? Absolutely, Ben. When you're talking about so many different options, then there's going to be different things that need to be in the box from one speaker versus another speaker option. So like with our HXM series, you're going to get a gasket that goes around the front of the speaker because it's got a different shaped frame. So that gasket goes on so it seals the speaker to the frame of the lid kit correctly. Others are going to have spacers that you need for the, the speaker to have the right fitment on the frame. Then you're going to have all of the hardware that you need to keep water out of the bag when you drill the hole through it. It's going to have all the wiring you need to run to the front of the bike. A Deutsch connector is built in so that if you need to service the bike, you can remove the lid kit without having to unrun a bunch of wire or cut wire while you're working on it. 
And last but not least, Brian, why don't you let the good folks tuning in know availability? Is this a kit that's coming down the pipe or is it ready to order right now? So these, all of these kits are ready to ship in stock in our warehouse. They are available, ready to go right now. So if you're a dealer, make sure you reach out to diamondaudio.com, check out the information, contact your rep or your distributor to get these parts in-house for your customers. Our next feature brand is a brand that's so recognized within our industry and for that for many years, but I'm not talking about a product. No, I'm talking about MECP, the certification process that meant so much coming up in this industry. Well, there's a brand new energy being uh, created by our new owner of MECP, Chris Bula, and he's going to explain to us how this all went down and explain the story behind how Chris Bula got involved with MECP. Hey, Ben, happy to be here. Love sharing the MECP story with people. Uh, and so you guys are no exception with that. So I got my start back in 1996, uh, becoming MECP certified and had worked with uh, the program, creating content, uh, reviewing uh, the content, creating exams, things like that, the study guides, all that good stuff throughout the years. And technically became a consultant for them back around 2018. And uh, when I first became that consultant, um, uh, I came in with a bunch of ideas, like things had to change, things had to become more modernized. Uh, and frankly, the program needed to become more accessible and legitimate, right? So uh, I just kind of took that, uh, that burden on. And uh, the, the owner at the time, Consumer Technology Association, great company, great organization, uh, they just, it was just outside their uh, kind of wheelhouse on trying to do all the things I wanted to accomplish with the program. Uh, so um, through COVID, after some shutdowns of testing centers and things like that, uh, the opportunity opened up for me to purchase the program. And uh, I did that. That sale became official January 1st of 2021. And since then, I've just kind of been rocking and rolling, putting all those changes in place that I had kind of dreamt up uh, before that. And changes you have made, sir, because there has been a tremendous amount of change, a whole new look, a new logo, a look and feel, an interface. So why don't you give us an overview of the type of things that have happened since you've become owner? Yeah, this is actually my favorite part of talking about MECP. Uh, the two things that I wanted to do uh, with this purchase and with the revolution of it was um, really trying to legitimize or re-legitimize the program. So... The first thing that we did was to put a verification tool up on the website. Uh, currently, we're the only certification, uh, I think, in the world, but I know for sure in the U.S. and Canada, uh, that has an online lookup tool that's real time to be able to verify uh, certified members. Um, and then second was I wanted to break down every single barrier to getting certified, getting the education that you needed to be proficient in your job. Uh, maybe to uh, aspire to get that pay raise or take on a bigger role within your company. I just want to break all those barriers down and make that accessible. So with that, uh, the entire uh, course, all, every course, every exam is fully online. You can take the course and exams on any phone or tablet or computer, anywhere you've got internet access. Um, and everything's real time. So the second you're certified, it shows up in our verification tool. You get issued your certificate. And it's just super easy to do. So let's uh, take a look at that verification tool. This is actually the coolest part of the whole website. And this is kind of where you get to kind of check people's uh, legitimacy out, right? So let's just put anybody's name in. Uh, you can put uh, my last name in just to check. Uh, I've got two there because one's on my, one of my testing accounts. But um, uh, we've got, uh, you know, the lists of all the Beulahs in the industry. Of course, my wife is certified too because she helps run the company. Uh, she got that certification on her own. She's very proud of that. Uh, but she certainly helps uh, run our booth at all the Knowledge Fest uh, events and things like that. And many of you guys have talked to her if you've uh, you know been in contact with our company uh, in the last couple of years. Um, but lots of cool stuff here, right? So you get to look up anybody in the industry, right? And not only do we have the MECP certifications, but we also have other certifications as well. So let me put in somebody from JL Audio. 
we even track some of the manufacturer certifications as well. So Steve Teresi or JL Audio, of course, is factory certified with JL. He's also Max and Tune certified. He helped develop those uh, training programs for JL Audio. So we're able to put in awards and certifications that are not just in the MECP world, but also other manufacturers. Uh, MEA awards uh, and, and prizes that you've gotten throughout the years with that organization, just all kinds of really cool stuff there. So here's my question to you, Chris. It's been a couple of years. Technology has changed. Time has changed. All the applications and all the products out there have changed. How would you answer the question if I asked you, what exactly is the relevancy of an ME cert CP certification right there in 2023? Ben, that's actually the easiest question to answer for sure. So let's pull up the screen here real quick and, and take a peek. So um, if you click that uh, certify, uh, get certified or access your courses here up at the top of this website, uh, that takes you directly to our certification portal. OK, and within here, you can uh, hover over this courses page and see any of these individual courses and take a peek at it. Most people start off with the apprentice installation technician. That's kind of your beginner kind of your starting point uh, on the technician side anyway. Of course, we have front of house or sales oriented courses as well. Uh, but this apprentice one is kind of the starter you know, point for most guys in the industry. So this, uh, this course overview page kind of shows you what you're going to encounter with this, uh, this course. So of course, it tells you a little bit of information here. It should take somebody no more than a solid 10 to 12 hours to complete this course. This is assuming they have little to no experience uh, in the industry. Uh, the people that have been in the industry for a few years, all that good stuff, they can certainly get in there and fly through it much faster. Uh, but then there's the click to enroll uh, tab right here. As you scroll down this page, it shows you the pricing. Uh, there is an annual renewal for the certification because we're constantly updating the data and the content to reflect all the new procedures, the new technology that's in the vehicles, et cetera. And then as you keep scrolling down, uh, it actually gives you the entire syllabus of the course, right? So you're going to see everything that that entire course goes over and an estimate of the questions and, and the sections that you're going to have within each section. Um, really cool stuff for sure. This kind of goes through the entire course itself. And down at the bottom, you'll see that you end up with that uh, apprentice certification exam. There is 75 questions on that. And uh, once you take that and pass, uh, it updates your record. You're instantly certified and it will show up on our verification tool. So from a relevancy standpoint, uh, we often get the question that, uh, hey, listen, I've been doing this 20 years. What can MECP teach me? Well, it's pretty awesome. But cars have certainly changed in 20 years, right? Uh, we also get people that say, oh, I, I was certified back in the day. Once I'm certified, I don't need to do it again. Right. And, and honestly, uh, you know, that's that's defensible in some cases. Right. Because in the previous iteration of MECP uh, under CTA, the content, the exams, all that stuff was being updated every four to six years. So there certainly was a time period where you could kind of consider yourself kind of up to date. Right. Um, but cars are changing way too fast. The technology is changing way too fast. So this annual renewal within our system ensures that you've always got the latest uh, technique, procedures, safety uh, regulations, uh, product technology, interface technology. Everything is being kind of shoehorned into that course all the time, right? We update it daily. Uh, so you're always getting the latest and greatest out of that course. So from a relevancy standpoint, I would say there's probably been no better time to say, hey, you have to get certified because cars today are way different than they were even three years ago, let alone 10 or 20 years ago. All right, so a quick summary here, Chris. It's a whole new revamp system. Everything is now taken online and updated. We've got different certifications for different categories. There's a annual renewal, as well as the moment you are certified, it's real live time, I'm into the system, people can check me out, there I am. Is there any, you know, hardware that I could show on my, you know, shop wall to kind of be proud of the fact that I've attained such a certification? Sure, there is, Ben. Of course, man. Like we love showing off, right? So, and and part of the part of the nature of MECP is trying to achieve something, right? So, uh, and I'm a big gamer, right? So, gamification is really cool to me. So, we love kind of the badges, the certificates, and all that good stuff. So, 
when you roll into your MECP profile on the website here, uh, you can simply just click visit your personal profile and it will pull up your profile. And any uh, course that you've already completed, it'll have a little button here that says click to view certificate. Okay. If you click that, it will uh, pop right up with your print quality PDF. Uh, you can print that yourself at your store. You can take that to a, a local print shop and they can print a nice card copy. Or you can go to our MECP store and you can order one. Comes in a nice little, you know, binder and a, a code of ethics certificate and everything along with that. It's really cool stuff. Um, but then there's another way you can kind of show this off too, and that's actually online. So of course, with the verification tool, you could verify this uh, or any customer could verify it as well, right? But there's another really cool thing here on our find a certified tech or specialist tab, all right? So this is a locator to find a certified tech or specialist in an area. This is the first time this has ever uh, been around. And of course, this pulled up my, my hometown here in Nashville. We've got several stores here that uh, have certified techs on staff. Uh, Cartronics is a, is a nice chain here locally. They do a really good job. And you can click one of these to view them and see information about their store. So it shows their logo, shows their shop, shows their contact information for the store, not for the technicians or specialists. And then it shows the certified techs or specialists at the store. Of course, you see... Kirkland, Terrence, and Nick here are certified at this location. Even shows that Terrence has gotten a few MEA awards on his uh, profile here, which is really cool. Well, let's go back to that address search. We also allow you to show off kind of the, the, the extra awards and things that your store has won as well. Not just personally, but the locations awards. So if you scroll down here, you see Titan Motoring. They're a pretty big name in the industry right now. And uh, if you click to view theirs, of course, they got a, a shop, uh, a photo of their team here. And actually, if you scroll way in, let's do this real quick here, see if we can. You see that uh, their whole team standing in front of all their MECP certifications there on the wall, which is pretty cool. Um, but they like showing this off. And what this shows is all of the actual awards and memberships that Titan Motoring has. So they're an MEA preferred member. It shows all of their awards they've gotten all the way back to 2018 when they kind of started pursuing those new awards. And then, of course, it shows all the certified techs and specialists that they have on staff. Right. So not only can you show off personally, but you can also show off, um, you know, your store locations, achievements and kind of attract people through our MECP.com website. So if you've uh, given MECP a little bit of thought in the past, just never took the, the, the leap to get the certification done. Maybe you were certified in the past, uh, maybe you had a good experience, maybe you had a sour experience, whatever it is. We're here to kind of give you a new uh, kind of shape-shifted experience with MECP. We want you to try the new platform where you can do everything online. We want you to have that real-time access to your certification. Uh, we want you to be able to show off. Let's show off your credentials to consumers. Let's put it up in your store. Let's get your store location linked to your profile. Uh, so you can show off everything that you and your store have accomplished. This is a great way to not only promote yourself, but your location within the industry. All right. So to learn more information, go to MECP.com. Super easy to remember. Uh, and click around, learn the story about MECP, play with all the features on the website, and click that Get Certified tab to start your learning course. Hey, guys. Ricky Lima here from SiriusXM. I had a chance to speak to some dealers and ask them what they love about selling Sirius XM. Here's what they had to say. Coast to coast coverage. I love Sirius XM for commercial free music. It's a great add on sale and a profit opportunity. We love selling Sirius XM because you can listen to the same channel coast to coast. Profitability and ease of installation. It's a no brainer. We love selling Sirius XM for its ease of installation, great profitability and reliability. People love it. go to Jody Culbertson, of course, representing Five Axis Innovations, our very valuable partner here on CMA Live, with another case study. And this time, Jody, I got to say, this is a drastic transformation. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the Project at Hand that was presented to you by Paradise Village? 
Yes, absolutely, Ben. You know, this customer came to us about nine to 10 months ago, and uh, we had talked to them previously about redoing their store. Um, they're located in New Mexico, the state, a great state of New Mexico, and their store is called Paradise Village. Um, Scott and his wife have owned the building and the uh, the business for quite some time now. And they've, uh, they've realized that with all the modernization that's happening around the world, they need to modernize their stores. So they started sending me photographs and showing me what they have to work with and what the stores look like. And, you know, again, they're in the same boat that a lot of retailers are in. They rented their store, you know, let's say 20, 30 years ago that the original owners rented. They've been working with what they've been working with, and now it's time to modernize it. So as they sent me the photographs, we started to chat with them about what their needs were and how we could help them. And obviously, when, when we do a process such as this, when they contact us, I love to understand what the customer really, truly wants in his store. And we spent quite a bit of time on the phone with Scott and his wife talking about what they want, the challenges they're having, um, how they see the, the layout going in their store. And then they really just left it up to us to kind of cart launch them into another dimension. And quite honestly, they were a great couple to work with. Um, you know, Scott was very innovative. He knew what he wanted. He loved the hexagon lighting. He did a lot of the uh, reno himself. He did a lot of floors himself. He really took the bull by the horn, should I say, and transform this store very quickly. I think within a month, it was fully ready for us. Well be before we were even ready to get the displays to them, they had their store transformed. It was uh, it was quite a remarkable process to work with them. All right, Jody, so let's dig in. Let's take a look at some of the images that were sent to you at first. So the other dealers tuning in, uh, I'm sure you're gonna recognize the scenario. I mean, I'll let you speak through it, Jody, but I mean, I, I look at these images and I'm like, yeah, definitely some work can be, uh, would be helpful. Yes, absolutely, Ben. Let's throw up some images and I'll walk you through the process of what we ended up uh, doing for him. All right, Ben. So the first image is what we see in a lot of markets these days where guys have a lot of product on the floor. They have tables, they have setup, they have stock, and they really have no place to showcase their product. Um, just because a lot of guys are used to having a million speakers on display, a million head units on display, tons of amplification on display, and they have no place to put it. Well, Scott and his wife had the same issue in their store. They had a lot of issues trying to figure out where to place all the product because they have some old school displays. And as you can see from the second image with the audio board, the second image has a bunch of head units a bunch of speakers. Now, what we're missing is all the stuff in behind each room. Now, they had two rooms, I believe, for audio, and they had 30 or 40 pairs of speakers on. They had 25 to 30 head units on display, tons and tons of product. And we all know in today's world, less is more. So as we looked at that, and as I saw that, my immediate reaction was, we need to remove that and open it up and get away from the rooms that they had created in their store. Because the old way of doing retail was always segregated rooms that you'd walk in and get sound quality and that. But in today's world, people are not accustomed to walking into rooms. They want an open environment. So as you can see from the third photo now, with that photo, again, more tables more stock. He had products stacked up everywhere and he was a very successful retailer. He did very well, um, but times are changing and he wanted to adapt to those times. So we started to figure out all the product he has on display. Where do we put it? He had to increase his warehouse space in the back. He had to get more creative with how he stores his product and how he buys his product to create that open environment. Because the number one challenge in most retailers, they do not have the space for warehouse. Their storefront was always their warehouse space. So we had to work with him to try to figure out ways to help him do that. And him and his wife accomplished that task very, very well in the store, as you will see. All right, Jody, it's time to show and tell. Five Access Innovations team gets in here. You had a vision. Show us what you did to transform this retail shop into a thing of beauty. All right, Ben, why don't we bring back the original image of that store? Just let's take one last view of what the store originally looked like at the first place. Okay, as you will see the first store, little dated, need a little love and attention. Now we're gonna reveal what it actually turned out in the transformation of how it actually appeared when you walk in now. What the most impactful part, and this, my hat goes off to, uh, to Scott and his wife, is that the ceiling looks amazing. They cleaned the ceiling up, they put the hex lighting in, that transformed the entire store immediately. As we uh, started to proceed, you look at the impact, it's clean, it's organized, it's got a very inviting, they did a beautiful gray laminate floor, 
They sealed up the windows in the back. They put a wall across the back. They completely cleaned up the store and removed all access of everything else. So when you walk into this store, it is better than an Apple store. It is better layout. It is basically an Apple and a T-Mobile cell store combined together with the halo lighting. It is breathtaking when you truly walk in. And as you see from the next image, you'll see our accessory islands. Okay, this is new to us. We started creating these about six, eight months ago, and they've been a huge, huge hit for us. We're allowing now dealers to bring the product onto the floor, but allowing them an area to, to showcase their product in a very organized fashion, still looking professional, getting it off the tables, doing slat wall on the end caps, product on the inside. One of the things that Scott requested, and he was the first one to do it, is he asked for a few more shelves because he had a specific way of showcasing his product, which actually turned out very, very nice. We've actually changed our ordering process on our islands due to him and his input on those islands. So it worked out very, very well. So as you see on the one, you see two of them sitting there. You can see kind of the subwoofer boxes stacked in front with some slat wall. And then you can see the lifestyle posters up on the wall. We did a couple different lifestyle photos on this store. So on the one wall, we had like a 24, 25 foot poster. The other ones were 14, but we wanted to present a very lifestyle driven store when you walked in. And as you see on the next image, this is a new, we've never even done this before. This was something that I'm getting requests for all the time, a way to display truck boxes in a showroom, but making it look cool and sexy. And we came up with the same style wood grain as his walls. We came up with adjustable shelves. We came up with the halo lighting. We came up with a cleat system that just literally locks onto the wall and the whole display hangs off of that. And then the customer can allow to change their boxes however they see fit. So it worked out remarkably well. And it solved the solution for him because he had no place to put the boxes and it gets everything off the floor up onto the wall. And now, as you can see from the next photo, we have totally transformed his audio section. So no more a million and one speakers, a million and one head units. Everything is very clean, very sleek. We did something with a price point. We did something for high end. We did our sound damping, our legendary sound damping display in the middle of the two audio boards. So when you're done selling the product, you simply walk over and let the customer hear what sound damping will actually do to the display. And finally, if you look in the back corner, you'll see an amplifier section. One of the things we found when we were designing the store, Scott came to me and said, Jody, I need to show more amplifiers. So we came up with an amplifier only static display, still looks super sexy with adjustable arms that he can put any type of amplifier on that wall and still allow him to show the product, but in a clean and organized fashion. So it turned out remarkably well. And as you see at the top, you can see the full lifestyle photo that talks about motorcycle, marine, audio, lifestyle, the whole shebang in one crack when you look at that back wall. And finally, this is the first time we've ever done this as well. If Scott came to us and had a request, I wanted to combine all our categories into one, and I want this to really be impactful, but he had a few requests. He wanted to show sound bars, and every time we've seen sound bars displayed, we could never figure out the way to make it look right. Well, we finally figured it out. We actually made our own pull bar on the front of the display to allow the sound bars to mount with four speakers. He put the whips on. And then we allowed the subwoofers to go below. So all in all, he has the ultimate power sports display covering all aspects that he can look for. And finally, when the customers do walk into the store, we wanted a absolutely breathtaking front counter. And we came up with something very unique and different for him in a way that's backlit acrylic. The whole hexagon theme flows throughout the store from the front of the displays to the top of the lighting, to all the graphical panels, all have that hexagon feel. So you have that flow that goes through the store. And the final thing that we did was, as I discussed before, we would do home and car. Well, he needed a home solution. So we came up with a very unique way to showcase all of his in-wall speakers, all of his outdoor speakers, some receivers, and all of his towers and bookshelf speakers, but still keeping a theme that matched the rest of the store. That was very, very important. It could not look like it was out of place. It needed to be in place. So we created that and it turned out amazing. The actual tower speakers with the edge lighting and the graphic up top. And notice how we did all the graphics up top in concert images. So we gave them the whole musical feel when you stand in front of that display and get that live demonstration. Jody, that showroom is nothing short 
of breathtaking and immaculate. It's modern. It's stuff dreams are made of. I know there's dealers watching this right now like, oh my God, how do I do this? What message do you have for retailers to wrap this up um, that also want a shot at their dream showroom? You know, that's a great question. We have retailers reach out to us every day and I want to really instill in everybody who's watching this video, big or small, you can start with baby steps and you can do exactly what Paradise Village did. But don't feel that you need to spend and break a budget just to get to where you need to be. I have a lot of stores that I work with over the course of six months, a year, year and a half to transform their store. And I have some stores that we might do it in planning it in three months and do it in a month. It all depends your budget. We will work with all budgets because I have a budget. Everybody has a budget. Um, but what I really want to instill in is making sure that you as a retailer realize that the faster you do your store, the more of a professional atmosphere you're going to have in your store. And that's what's key. The professional atmosphere is huge. The last time I talked to Scott asking how his store was doing and asked for things, he said everything was amazing. And it almost brought tears to my eyes listening to him tell me stories about how customers were coming in because he allowed us to be a part of that solution and a part of that success. So obviously the team, I wanna really, really thank the team at Paradise Village for allowing us the opportunity to come in and trust us to help them get to that next level. That really meant a lot to us. And you know, understanding Scott and his wife and the whole team and seeing what they've done and what they're about to accomplish over the next five to 10 years is nothing but exceptional and breathtaking. So again, I'm very excited to uh, see the future for them as well as future retailers as we get to work with various uh, retailers across the country. Our goal is always to work with each retailer in their own specific needs and create the experience that they want their customers to see. All right, that's a wrap on this week's CMA All Access brought to you by SiriusXM and sponsored by Five Access Innovations. I want to take this opportunity to thank all our guests who came in today. That's it for this episode. We'll see you next time. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect. There's never been a better time to have Sirius XM with over 150 channels in your vehicle. Your Platinum Plan offer includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels and enjoy favorite shows with Sirius XM video on demand. What you love is on now.